Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, it's time to solve a few simple problems related to right triangles. This is probably the most frequently occurring uh, problems in, in elementary course of trigonometry. So um, all these problems are really trivial and they just follow very, very simply from the definition of the trigonometric functions for the right triangle. So before going into these problems, let me just remind you in general what we are talking about. So if we have the right triangle with one acute uh, angle phi uh, and two casualty A and B, B is opposite, A is adjacent, and C is hypotenuse, then we can actually talk about um, slightly different, slightly, well, maybe simpler definition for trigonometric functions. So if you, if you remember, the general definition is related to the unit circle. Um, in case we have acute angle for this acute angle, you can actually um, use this right triangle and define all the trigonometric functions in this way. Sinus phi is equal to opposite catetus uh, to hypotenuse. Cosine of phi is adjacent to hypotenuse. Tangent phi is opposite to adjacent. Um, cotangent phi is opposite A to AB. Uh, secant is 1 over cosine, which is C over A. And cosecant is C over B. So these are definitions which are absolutely equivalent to corresponding definitions um, for unit circle, which are more universal and applicable to all angles, not only the acute angles, as these definitions. But for acute angles, they are absolutely um, uh, equivalent, and we were talking about this. But now, based on all this, I would like to solve a few problems related to uh, related to simple um, kind of condition. You have three different uh, characteristics of this triangle. You have some trigonometric function of the acute angle, and you have some two actually um, linear characteristics like hypotenuse and a catechus or catechus and another catechus, etc. And all the problems which are really um, considered in this particular lecture are if you know only two elements out of these three, how to find the third one. That's the general approach to everything. And obviously we are talking about some kind of an equation which we have to solve. Like for instance, if I know B and I know sine of phi, how to find C? Or if I know A and B, how to find cotangent of, of phi, etc. So all these problems which I'm going to talk about are about this particular um, activity, if you wish. You've got two elements out of three, and using the corresponding equation, find the third element. Now, with this introduction, let's just go one by one. Uh, so, first what we did here, we have, and this is actually the problem number one, which I have already solved, how to express all the different trigonometric functions of this particular angle phi uh, in terms of other uh, linear elements, sides actually, of this triangle. And this is basically the solution to uh, this problem number one out of whatever I have, eight I believe. So this is something which you um, well, probably it's one of the few things which you really have to remember. Not all of them, obviously. Uh, but, you know, at least sine and cosine, because everything else is derived. 
tangent is sine over cosine, cotangent is cosine over sine, secant is 1 over cosine, and cosecant is 1 over sine. So everything else is basically follows from, this, from these two. But in any case, I would consider this problem number one, which I wanted to offer you, um, express all the different six trigonometric functions of this acute angle in terms of uh, all other sides. Now, let's go to other problems. And uh, I do suggest if you didn't try it yourself first, before listening to this lecture, do this. I mean, it's really kind of very simple problems. All right, so number one. What if you have a hypotenuse and an angle? So you have to express a cathedral's A in terms of hypotenuse and an angle. Well, let's just think about it. Where are angle A and C participate in this? Well, you can use this one, or you can use this one, because in both cases we have exactly these three elements which we need. An angle, uh, the cathedral which we have to determine, and the hypotenuse. Well, let's just use this one, but we'll use both. So in this particular case, how to resolve this equation for A? Well, obviously, A equals to C times cosine of 5. Now, how about this one? From this one, A is equal to C over secant of 5. And obviously, this is the same thing, because secant, by definition, by general definition, is actually 1 over cosine. So if you will substitute this 1 over cosine, then you will get exactly the first formula. Now, I don't have to worry about um, denominator being equal to 0, because we are talking about the right triangle, which means phi is really an angle which is greater than 0 and less than 90. And in this interval, none of these are equal to 0, so everything is fine. That's number 2 problem. Problem number... Uh, I have two problems which are exactly under number 2. Another is another casualties. I have to find a function in terms of hypotenuse and an angle. All right. So now we have to find, again, the corresponding expression which contains b, c, and, uh, and, and phi. Well, you can use this one, and from this one, b is equal to c times sine of phi. Or I can use this one, where b is equal to c over cosecant of phi. All right? And again, these are completely equivalent because cosecant is 1 over, c, uh, one over sine. Okay, let's finish with the problem number two. Number three. Three and four, actually. Express hypotenuse in terms of cathedral A and an angle phi. Well, we really have to do the same thing. We have to find the formula which participates A, C, and phi, like this one. But now we have to find C. So C would be equal to A over cosine of phi from this formula. And from this formula is C is equal to A times secant of phi. Obviously, this is equivalent because secant, again, by general definition, is 1 over cosine. So that's the same thing. Now, how about B? Another cathedral which I have given, an opposite to phi. Well, in this case, I suggest to use either this one or this one, right? In the first case, C from this equation is equal to B over sine of phi. And from this one, B is equal to, oh, sorry, C. C is equal to B times cosecant of phi. Okay, next. 
Now it's a little bit more precise. Express hypotenuse in terms of uh, the casualness A and not just anything related to phi, but precisely tangent of phi. Okay. Well, let's just think about it. There is no formula here, right? However, what can be done is, knowing A and knowing tangent, I can find B, right? Knowing this catetus and the angle, I can find B, because B over A is equal to tangent. So let me do it first. B is equal to A times tangent of phi from this one. But now, since I know B and A, I can calculate C using the Pythagorean theorem, right? I know that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, from which C is equal to square root of A squared plus, and instead of B squared, I'll use this one. Which is the same thing as A outside of the square root, and here I have 1 plus tangent square phi. Tangent square phi is tangent phi squared. It's just more um, traditional um, uh, usage of uh, this particular way how to, to, to multiply the trigonometric function by itself. Usually this power is written between the function name and the function argument. All right, so that's it. Now, I don't have to worry about positive value of the square root or negative value because we're talking about um, a triangle, which means everything is positive. So this is arithmetic value, the real main uh, uh, main value of the, of the square root, the positive one. Um, and A is obviously the side. All right, so that's how it is. Now, very similarly, what if my side, my catechute is different. Instead of A, I have B. Well, we can do the same thing. From B now, we can take A. So what's A? A is equal to, I think this is m more convenient. Uh, A is equal to B times cotangent phi. And now, again, I'm using the Pythagorean theorem. So C square is equal to A square plus B square. So C is equal to square root of A square, which is this, B square cotangent square phi plus b squared, which is equal to b square root of cotangent square phi plus 1. So that's the formula for c. What else? This is just one little, little complication. So we have to do two steps instead of one. Instead of just straight formula, we have to do first some intermediary calculation to calculate the second catechus, and then use the Pythagorean theorem. All right, next is express A in terms of C and tangent phi. Well, basically, it's more or less the same thing. Um, what can we do about this? Now, tangent uh, from C and tangent phi, uh, what can be done? Well, um, what we can do actually is, let me just think about what's the best way of doing this.
since I have tangent, I have B over A, right? So, on one hand, B over A is tangent. So that's the known thing, right? On another hand, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, right? That's the Pythagorean theorem. What we can do right now is we can solve this system of equations for A. Now, how can we do it? Well, we can express B from here. It would be B is equal to A tangent phi. Substitute B into this equation. We will have A squared plus A squared tangent squared phi equals C squared, or A squared times 1 plus tangent squared phi is equal to C squared. Well, from which A is equal to, we can have square roots from both sides and divide by 1 plus tangent squared. That's what we will have. So that's the answer. Now, very similarly, that's the last one. If I want to find B, in terms of C and phi, I have to do very similarly. I'll use uh, did I do it right with A? Was it tangent or cotangent I had to use? All right. Well, in case of B, if I made a mistake with A, it's exactly the same for B would be. So you will figure it out. So this is the expression from here, and I can substitute it. Uh, no, I have to do it vice versa. I have to do the A in terms of B now. Which means what I should probably do better, I will use A over B, which is cotangent phi. Now I will express A in terms of B, so everything is right from this, right? So A over B is cotangent, and this is Pythagorean theorem. I express A in terms of B and substitute it here, and I will have B squared 1 plus cotangent square phi is equal to C squared, from which B is equal to C over square root 1 plus cotangent square phi. That's the answer. Okay, so these are really as simple as it can be. Uh, most of these problems are just derived from, uh, from the equivalent definition of trigon trigonometric functions for right triangle. And again, let me just emphasize again and again, these are not a true definitions uh, for any angle. These are a different definitions for acute angle, which are exactly equivalent to definitions which we have um, used for any angle using the unit circle. So from, from these six uh, uh, equalities, identities, whatever you want to call them, um, follows immediately practically all of these guys, except a couple of the last ones where you really have to do just very, very little uh, manipulation using some intermediary steps or something. All right, so that's it. These are simple problems. Um, do not think that trigonometry is that simple. Um, I will have a 
few very important lectures about different trigonometric, trigonometric identities and equalities, and I will present much more complicated problems um, related to, to trigonometry, which it's not really easy, like one step and you will get a solution, even two steps. So be prepared. Anyway, this is simple, and uh, I would suggest you to repeat again, just using the notes, uh, to this lecture on unisor.com. That's it. Thank you very much.